Hi, I'm Tim Byrne. This is Tim Byrne Almost Live. Uh, tonight's guest is Dylan Gosine from Stadia Door and Glass. Dylan and I shoot the shit about technology. I'm a big fan of technology and I talk about a lot. Of, uh, I think what people forget is that when you incorporate new technology into your company, I don't care whether it's Salesforce or some other kind of work order management system, or even if it's QuickBooks, you got to be able to reduce keystrokes, which leads to reducing headcount, which leads to reducing costs. And if you're not going to reduce your costs when you take on technology, then that technology probably isn't worth taking on. You can catch me on YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, find me wherever you need to. If you're a vendor, supplier, if you're a customer, if you're a property manager, construction guy, project manager, I'd love you to come on the show. We got brand new intro, brand new stuff coming up. Uh, PM Expo, Connect Show, uh, Rifma out of the US, uh, Spring Fest. Oh my gosh, we're going to be at so many shows, doing so many podcasts. If you want to join me, you can find me. Dylan and I have a great conversation. He's a good kid and he's got his shit together and I love him to death. I hope you enjoy my show as much as I enjoyed interviewing Dylan. And like always, you'll see me on the backside. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Dylan Gosine Almost Live. <laughs> Tim, <laughs> Tim has been locked away and I'm taking over today's show. Um, I don't know what we're going to be talking about yet, but I have an hour full of random things that I'm going to talk to you guys about. Um, what do you guys want to talk about? All right, we're just, I'm going to wait for a response. again. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, it's Tim Burton. This is Tim Burton Almost Live. My friend and my... Uh, co-host and my interview e e person and Stadia sales rep guy. Sales rep guy. That uh, sums up my. That, I put it on my resume. Sales rep guy. I don't have anything on my uh, <laughs> business card. I, you have something in your business card, don't you? No, just my name. That's it. Uh, the best was uh, hold it, but on LinkedIn, aren't you like super senior manager? Oh like, no, uh, general uh, business of, business development manager is what I in something <laughs> right put on LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, no, I right, your business manager. Yeah, I like Why that. Not? I saw that. Hey, I sent you. I sent you. I sent you something on LinkedIn uh, the other night. Did you? I yeah. didn't get it. Yeah, I sent you. Oh, well, probably three in the morning. <laughs> I like to work at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I could, I could tell. I could tell. My boss is an owl. I don't. Uh, I don't sleep well. So, and I also don't. I also don't like to have any. I don't want anything to do at seven a.m. Uh, I agree with you. I know it sounds. I think that I think, sounds messed up. But I, I agree with you on the, especially the Monday morning side. Um, right. Being in sales, I mean, you, we obviously try and prospect as much as we can. And I think from a social side, customers don't want a sales guy knocking on their door first thing on a Monday morning. Sure. They want to sit down, enjoy their coffee, work their way in, right? right. Um, so I try and make sure that my Monday mornings are situated in that same type of manner. I just don't like having a lot. Uh, uh, my job is to be a fireman. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, when I'm grounded down with my own... Uh, electronic paperwork right uh, on Monday I feel like I don't have the the room to take on anybody else's burden and I think that most of my irritated phone calls and most of my uh, questions and my concerns and did that job get started why did that job go right. wrong right where's that quote why did that happen did the bonding company call blah blah blah, blah, blah. all happens on Monday <laughs> And every time I've left quotes or paperwork, electronic paperwork, because we're yeah. paperless, yep. electronic paperwork to be done, I get screwed over on Mondays, and I feel like I'm, and I feel that I feel that pressure, and it drives me crazy. And and I think also, I mean, for everyone, everyone says I hate Mondays, right? Yeah, I want to love my Monday, and, and and that's the thing, right? You want to situate your Monday where you can be productive, not be stressed out, and and if I give up a couple hours on a Sunday or or Saturday afternoon with a cup of coffee in my Why hand, not? Why not? Uh, in front of a fire or, or sitting on the dock, because yep. because we have like technology that lets us do it wherever we exactly. want to do it. It does make it does make life a lot 
uh, friendlier. It does. Um, it's, you know, sitting in your dock doing estimates yeah. or reviewing just, paperwork. The, the speed at which things can be done is uh, incredible. So, incredible. giving up two hours in is uh, uh, to make my Monday into, you know, uh, uh, the perfect Monday. Every yeah. Monday is the perfect Monday as yeah. long as I'm not under any pressure. The only time I have a shitty Monday is when I don't work on when the weekend. You weekends. don't do the work on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. and I, really, I, I, I know that sounds. I just I, I want to sit around and drink coffee on on Monday morning. Yep. And if nothing happens, I get to enjoy my Monday morning, whether it's at the office or at home or wherever, where, right. or, or wherever right. I am, but not feeling or, like or I'm extra not, time on, a, on that electronic paperwork. Yeah, but hey. not feel like I'm I'm panicking. Yeah. I don't want the panic mode. Yeah. All right. Uh, you were on the show. Um, oh my gosh. <sighs> Two years? No, year? Well, year and a half. It's been going for a year and a half. Yeah. And. What's wrong? It's been going on for... No, no. It's been longer than one year. Yeah, Dylan was one year. And we were drunk. <laughs> we were? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're all turning off our phones now, right? <laughs> um, we were drunk, and we were talking about shitting. Uh, shitting. Yeah. Yeah, in the different places to poo around the city. Yeah, pooping. Yeah. Because we... And there, there, so I've gone to certain association events, and there's a lot of people that obviously love the podcast, and they brought it up to me. Have they? Like, Thank you. Thanks to you and Tim. We know where to go in the city when you need to use Have you actually had that? Yeah. yeah. I, actually, the, the, the same one we just went to uh, for TCA. And the audio on that podcast was awful. Yeah, because you were still new, really new to it. Yeah, yeah, really, really new. And I don't think you had the, the team that you had behind you at that time, or, aka Alex, uh, <laughs> Alex, or, or um, even Danny at the time. The guy who was editing it. We we've switched through a few people, and right. and uh, the way we um, record, even the type of microphones we yep. have, yep. and the equipment we're using. I mean, it was a shitty. Saying that, I funny enough is the most the most sincerity, the uh, honest lack of editing, lack of uh, production quality, lack right. of content end up being some of the best. Yeah, well, I listen. I listen to one that you and I did. I fuck well, giggle. See, not even that. I personally, one of my favorites, the one that I remember is the one you recorded in your car. Oh, the six when minutes. When you were driving, <laughs> and I think right. you just had the microphone in your car. Yeah, there's ramble just talking and talking about your life and how you started the business and yeah. how you got to today. And it's just for me that. It's incredible to see where the growth and where it's come. We, we, uh, I sent you an email because we were talking about what we were talking about today. Yeah. You and I had some conversations, whether it would be um, you interviewing me, me interviewing you, and then I wrote right. a whole bunch of subject matter down. Did you look at that email? I did. And you hated I it? I tend to read emails. I don't. <laughs> I don't read email. <laughs> Uh, Elon Musk gave up email years ago. I gave up email yeah. along with Elon Musk. Yeah. 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 Well, he's not a bad guy to follow, man. Brother. Right? <laughs> I, just, I couldn't See, handle Mr. Musk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He only does yeah. text and phone calls, yeah. right? He doesn't do any email. I, if you need an email from him, you have to tell him you're sending him I, something. I think, I think that the phone is the best way to go about business. I mean, emails are, are simply, as you say, a receipt of your transaction. Like, Yeah, something already completed verbally, right? It's just a receipt of it. If you can't write as per my conversation <laughs> at the it. top of that email, you probably <laughs> you probably shouldn't be sending that at all. And actually, the, I think the higher you go up in the rank, you know, when you go from uh, being the truck driver in the back or sweeping the floors on, in, in the in the uh, loading dock of the right. building, right. Um, as you, uh, the higher you go up, I think you and the more comprehensive your emails become, mm -hmm. I think the the more obvious it is that if you cannot say as per our conversation, you probably shouldn't send that email because email should only only be a receipt of a transaction already completed verbally. It should not be uh, a you going, "Hey, how are you? Could you do hey, me?" This is my name. The, this is what I do. Or, de oh, dear gosh. Dylan, I just. <laughs> I'm reaching out to you because, okay, can I tell you, you're fired. Yes. Do not send that shit to me. Do not. I get those emails, and you, so you're literally, all you're doing is clogging my email. I, I, I don't find, know who you are. I find very interesting, too. Unless it's for Viagra, say. I don't care. <laughs> the Viagra ones I always read. You read them? If they're free, yeah. I go for the free Viagra. I have no problem it's with it. click the unsubscribe on those. Problem is, the problem is they're dark blue, and I think they're just M&Ms. Yeah. Those free ones, I don't think they are they anything. Do they have, I don't think they have M's on them. I've there. never got a bone. <laughs> From those dark blue ones, it's the light blue, the light blue the diamond, light blue. the light blue diamond shaped ones. <laughs> it's not the round ones. The round blue ones are the M and M's. That's it. That's it. The Smarties. Hey man. <laughs> Right, we're breaking. Ground. Not that I. We're breaking ground. Not that, like I use my, not that I use Viagra. That's, <laughs> you know, I'm, you know. Excuse me. I'm just. I like M and M's. I mean, does that count for anything? <laughs> I really like M and M's. I like M and M's. M and M's are a favorite. Chocolate. I love chocolate. I love M and M's and Reese. Oh, I just, I, top have you ever have you ever taken a chocolate just uh, like an Easter bunny you got from Easter right yep. you get bunnies and you ever dipped it in peanut butter no 
Okay. But that sounds incredible. Oh, my God. You want, you, you want a moment? <laughs> I promise you can. Well, you see, that's oh. why I enjoy Reese, because I, I love peanut butter. You get super so fat. That, that's why. Oh. All right, you take a whole Easter bunny, you just dip a scoop in it. <laughs> You're scooping it and eating it. Right? I started, I started recently eating banana with uh, peanut butter on it. You need to try that. Okay. Uh, you, do you know what yum yum pickles Texture? are? No. The little thin sliced sweet pickles. Yeah. Thin sliced pickles. They're called yum yums. I'm dill, um, I'm dill pickle and I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay, so yum yum pickles are by Bix Pickles. Okay. They're sweet little skinny things. Right. Uh, put them on a bagel with peanut butter. <laughs> bagel, peanut butter, and pickles? Pickles. Yeah, it was a kid thing that I used to always do. And now we do it with cream cheese or peanut butter. That's but something. I love pickles and peanut butter and that's pickles and cream cheese. That's something I need to try. Right. When I, when I was little, I used to do peanut butter sandwiches, and then I'd have my hot chocolate, and I would dunk my peanut butter sandwich into my hot chocolate and eat it. Yeah. It was, it was a re-sandwich for me. I went to Catholic school, and, of course, 90% of the population was Italian. Right. And they ate Nutella. <laughs> I, I, don't, I personally don't like Nutella. Oh. I'm not a fan of Nutella. I gotta tell you, it's Samir, all the Nutella Samir, fans. I'm sorry, Samir Nutella. That that and the Italians had no meat sandwiches. <laughs> One single slice of meat on this massive bun, <laughs> huge bun, right? This big, huge stale Kaiser, <laughs> oh, with no man. butter, no mayo, no nothing. That's white kids. That's white kids. That's really bad. That's sorry, bad. that's terrible. That was bad. Didn't say white kids. <laughs> Us white kids wanted all the mayo and all the icky shit on it, right? The Italian kids, they dry as a bone. No wonder they all talk like that, because their sandwiches. We're dry. So, so dry. <laughs> Just need some water. <laughs> okay, what subject did you want to talk about? Did you pick one? Did you pick we one? We have a whole list. I know we can't do that whole list. So. Well, hey, what do you want to know? What gonna, do you want to talk about? We're, we're just going to. You got to pick one. No, you got to pick a subject. Come on, didn't you pick one of those things? Uh, well, out of the whole list, I, I, ha mean, I haven't. I don't know if you can see that. I got to get glasses. I, me too. I really got to. I have glasses. glasses, and I refuse to. Don't look at my porn. Please. Oh my god. Is that a goat? <laughs> it's a chicken. It's a chicken. <laughs> I think I think look, the first couple are all really relevant. The first three even. The uh, the first one I wrote is Blockbuster or Amazon. Who are you? Yeah. Be Amazon. I, can I tell you that that even uh, though I enjoyed Blockbuster, I started writing this list <laughs> because a hey, you and I were going to do this. Yeah, but I wrote this list when I was on the um, phone with Steve Eichelson, Mr. Eichelson. Yeah, and um, and now I'm going to bust into the number twelve one because this that that conversation was with him. So we were talking about uh, Avis and Young mm -hmm. and property managers in general, mm -hmm. and uh, the operations guys on site. Or the building management on site, getting signed work orders from trades. We had this conversation, right, about uh, one or two technicians in a truck, and whether you're HVAC, elevators, glass and doors, <laughs> parking and deck, painting guys, yep. whatever you are, trying to find the property slash operations manager on site and getting a work order signed. Yeah, and uh, it can be very time consuming. Our guys at Stadia and at Burn on Demand, those guys spend anywhere between ten and thirty. Minutes, oh, easily. Average. Like, easily. Like, like 15, 20, like easily. looking around for somebody, waiting for somebody, and, waiting for them to be done with somebody else. And, and that's just signing the work order, right? I mean, well, imagine when they first get to site and you got to get access to a suite or you got to get well, access to a you, suite. You, just, just stay with the, stay with the uh, administrative side of that mm -hmm. at the end of the job, finding that guy. And, and, the, and, I be, and I'm a service guy. Yep. Nine times out of ten, they never, that operation guy never walked over to see what I did. I waited for him in a lobby or or in a basement on his telephone, Loading waiting dog or something, waiting for him to find me or meet each meet up each other to get him to sign something that he never looked at. Yeah, and and I figured out that cost was costing uh, if you say four for for a state of service tech or for the building operator, the building operator meets five, six, seven trades a day. Yep, uh, that's seven work orders. Mm -hmm. 15 minutes let's say the most of the crews are two so it's fifth let's let's call it 15 minute average and it's 15 minutes for the operation the building operator 15 minutes for the two techs that's 45 minutes of time yep if the cost on that labor without markup without um all the perks benefits yep. already pays about 40 dollars an hour right and that's wsib insurance uh uniforms blah blah blah, blah. um it's 40 45 dollars an hour you're at 50, at 45 minutes and let's round up to one hour. One hour per work order of time being used. So it's forty. It's forty dollars 
an hour just to have the work order signed. Right. It's costing everybody 40 bucks, 50 bucks just to have one work just order signed. Just to get signed. work order signed. And they're signing seven of those a day. <laughs> so four times seven. Yeah. Go ahead. 280. Two, two. So it's, <laughs> right, it's 280. It's 280, <laughs> right? Um, uh, um, so it's cost them $280, $300 a day. And, and if you multiply that by 221 working days, so let's, at three hundred dollars times two hundred and twenty-one working days, three hundred sixty-six thousand dollars a building Woo. to have work order signed. Woo. Let's assume that the, the average point of the purchase orders in those buildings. I'm not talking big contractual work. Yeah, yeah. Because nobody gets a work order signed in the big contracts. Right. Uh, an architect comes out, signs off, yeah. blah blah blah. Let's assume you had six or seven service guys a day coming into your building. It's costing you sixty-six grand to get a work order signed. That's the collective effort of the trades and your operator. Right. Let's assume that, uh, let's make a couple of assumptions. Let's assume that 10% of everybody that you worked for, that that worked for you, screwed up the job and had to come back. The 66 grand you saved, even if they said, screw you, I'm not giving you a warranty. The 66 grand, if the average point of service call was $1,000 or $1,500, and the only reason I picked those numbers is because if you looked at a billing operator, he can sign a purchase order for a thousand bucks, which means that I would tell you that that's the 80-20 rule, because property managers don't want to deal with all the little non-skill things, so they go, give give the guy a thousand dollars sign authority, right? So even if even 10% of your work orders were screwed up, so if we said there was, so hang on to 66 grand. Yep. So if we said seven work orders a day times 221, that's right. That's 1,500 work orders a year going out of the average building. 10% of that's 150. Yep. Okay. Do you, do you get it? Like, the, the, so at 66 grand, why don't we just collectively uh, get technology in place as an industry? Well, right, go paperless. To, to, to go paperless, but to have the text GPS stamp when they're on site. Yep. So it, they get a site, it, uh, and they open a work order in their technology. It stamps the work order that it was 222 at one young. Yeah. And and uh, when they press finish, it stamps it. You know. 445, one young. Done. Nobody needs to see them. We know they fixed the door. We don't have to argue about it. Right. And even if um, 10% of your work orders got screwed up, A, I'm going to tell you that most companies would follow through with it. Mm-hmm. And B, the ones that didn't, you have the money and the resources from the money you saved. And I appreciate these seem like untangible costs because how, how do I capture that on my bottom line? That's always the problem why they won't eliminate it because they don't actually know how to capture it. Right. Uh, I talk about keystrokes all the time. If I can save one keystroke, that's one second. I mean, eliminate as many as possible. The average person at uh, stated is about 125,000 keystrokes a year. That's 125,000 seconds a year of work. Yeah. If I can get rid of each second, you gain capacity. So let's assume that your building operator gained those extra three hours a day. Think about how much stuff you could get done. And right, how many more light bulbs you could change, sure. the training he could take, sure. uh, meeting with the tenant, the landlord, yep. uh, his boss, as well as his tenants, who are both his bosses because they get it from both yep. sides, uh, taking care of the property better, making sure the small miscellaneous things are, 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 are well looked it, after quicker. It's interesting because it, I feel like that's very relevant to what we started talking about over the Sundays, making sure that your work is prepped for money. That would be the exact same situation, right? right? But I think the gain of, You I, can invest that time in other places. Yeah, and I think when you have your uh, leadership caught, down, caught up in your leadership on site caught up in minutia. Yeah. I think companies lose perspective of how much that's actually costing the corporation and how much they're really not getting done. Right. And yet the problem is that on a big level, on a CFO level, if they can't measure it, can't they manage can manage it. it. <laughs> uh, so they're not willing to cut it because right. they can't measure that. Right. But I actually think if they took technology and put it into play, that the speed in which, so A, trades like us become cheaper because our guys aren't standing there. Think about it. We do this four or five times a day. We're burning yep. two hours a, a day just in signatures. A lot of time. Even that IVR stupid bullshit that they do it, oh, for retailers, check in for retailers, oh that check-in God. shit. Okay, uh, they don't want us to do it from our cell phones. They want to do it from a landline. Really? Yeah, yeah. So when you go to the store, you have to wait until they're off the phone. A lot of stores only God. have one landline. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This I is thought a bit, you could do it from your No, phone. so you literally stand there and wait because they want it off that phone. <laughs> so you could stand in the store for half an hour. Just waiting. Wait, And if the store is busy? 
Yeah, for sure. You know, right. it's a PA day for the kids. I'm yeah, all yeah, busy yeah. on a yeah, Thursday, yeah. on a Friday. You could literally stand in the store waiting for half an hour, 45 minutes before you do your IVR. <laughs> and I'll tell you right now, the IVR. And you got to do that checking in and checking yeah, out. Yeah, right? check out. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's all bullshit. I think I think that people learned how to fake it. I think people learned how to make numbers private. I think people ha- learned how to find fake signatures on the internet to get them signed. I think people are are, are bullshitting. Now here, here's the other thing. I wouldn't be surprised if people went to that length. I mean, oh, because at the end of the day, when when the technicians stand there for half an hour, he's like, "Fuck this! Right. I'm not I'm not doing right. this." And then it's a Friday night, and he's trying to get. Yeah, it's five thirty at night. It's five thirty night. There's two more jobs to get to, and he's going to yeah. stand there in some store going, "I got to make the IVR phone call." Right. And yes, today they do it, but we. But I, I will tell you, the last five years, yeah. we've had more and more trades on a national level. Mm-hmm. You know, like Frank and Flynn Flon. <laughs> you know, Frank the plumber. Go, I'm not doing this. Yeah. I'm not doing it. So we literally learned how to fake because we know that Frank did the job. Right. Frank sent us a photo. <laughs> we had full conversation with Frank on site. We've right. used Frank for 25 years. Frank ain't screwing Frank me over, gonna, but yeah. Frank's not standing on site for a half an hour to <laughs> dial some nine-digit pit pin into some call center. Oh my! He's God. just not. So and he walks out. Not, so we've had to learn how to fake it with. Um, so you can make your phone look like it's a landline, and you can and you can it privatize uh, it out. Okay. You can fool around with all the numbers. Yeah, yeah. I, okay, so that makes me sound like I'm really bad. But the problem is. The speed of which we do business to be profitable, I can't afford that much time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So Steve and I had this conversation about uh, eliminating signatures, uh, GPS stamp in, stamp right. out, speed the process up, give it, free everybody's time up. And, and then, of course, I said we talked about uh, being ripped off, guys lying. I said to Steve, and this is the problem with those work order management companies and some property management companies. Mm-hmm. I said to Steve, but you shouldn't actually be doing work. With trades you don't know. Yeah. That is a good <laughs> at point. Least, at least one that of the other things point. I wrote, right? That is so a good point. So now you're telling me that you've hired a guy that, that you, you don't know, don't know yep. who you think is going to rip you off and you have no trust for, so you need a signature. So you're willing to spend approximately uh, one-third of your building operator's day yeah. signing f- stupid piece of, piece of paper or on, on, a, on a tablet. On an electronic, yeah. You, one-third of his day. Um, you've created an entire IVR system in retails because you don't trust your trades. I think there's there, there, there's a bigger problem than, than, than you getting the job done. Sure. You don't trust anybody. For sure. You got to get people you trust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, 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 I don't worry about my staff. I don't need to stand here at the back to make sure they show up in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> and if I do, there's a bigger there's a problem. problem. <laughs> if, I have to, if I had to have my staff IVR into the shop in the morning, and IVI are out of the shop in the morning. There'd be a there's a much bigger <laughs> from the pink stadia phone. <laughs> there's a much bigger ancestral problem with my organization. If my staff needed IVR in and out, yeah. And if I'm an extension of a retailer, if I'm an extension of Avis and Young, don't you think there has to be a little bit of trust in there? Right. Interview your trades, get to know them, figure out whether they're honorable people, whether they live inside a moral compass. Right. So now you're not. So now you're telling me. A, I want to burn one third of my of the building operator's, operator's time. time. Yep. I also want to burn a huge amount of money with these IVR work order systems because I don't because I didn't want to vet or get to know any of my, my trades. <laughs> which, by the way, just because Buddy showed up on site in IVR doesn't mean he did a good job. Yep, not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Right. I've had a guy that I met that came to my house and fixed my refrigerator, left and my refrigerator, broke down two minutes later. Yeah. Well, it's all fine. The end, you say, well, you IVR'd in and out, so I'm not paying you. He just doesn't come back. <laughs> Why don't I get to know the guy, understand each other, right. trust him, feel some confidence in his ability before I even hire him? Why but, the fuck do I hire a guy I don't like? And I, I, think, I think that just independently even just having a conversation with your trade um, will will give them that confidence. And from, from the trade's perspective, to see that the property manager or the general manager, the building operator comes down to check up on them and say, hey, how are things going? That are the moments that build trust. Well, I, I don't, uh, listen, I, I don't think you'll fuck a friend. So as soon as you're friends with somebody, I think you're going to do a good job. I think you're going to ask for fair pay for, for fair effort, for fair work. I think everybody's going to work at a deal when you're friends. And the minute you're not friends... It's when things start going sideways. Is when, start, is when you start developing mass schemes to manage the imperfection or impurity of your staff. What's going on? Why are we beeping? I <laughs> So we're pulling away. It's a far away shot yeah, now. Yeah. Far away, far away, <laughs> far away... 
<laughs> there we go. And we're going to pause for a second, Situated. Danny. He's just going to cut all this shit out. Cause... Situated. And now we're zooming back in. Now we're zooming back in. Right. Welcome back. Come back. <laughs> But but so you go from you go from wasting the operator's time because you don't trust your trade, right? So now you're wasting wicked amount, and this is like you're talking about billions of square feet across Canada, billions and billions and billions, um, with, with thousands of billion operators l- losing two to three hours many a day. Jobs going in and out. Never mind, and never mind uh, on the retail side, you've created these massive dinosaur IVR systems. Well, using using landline technology, which is really that's funny. That's just okay, right? That's bizarro. That's in bizarro land right there. Yeah, they've literally built a landline i a landline IVR system in today's Wi-Fi world to force a technician to stand in the store to wait for it to become free. That phone. Here's the kicker in the phone and, thing. And nine times out of ten, nine phone times phone. out of those phones are in the back or behind the cash. Right. So nobody wants you to go there unless you're with the store manager. Right. That process takes anywhere between five and twenty minutes to call in, because they're not they don't have to just do IVR. They have to call in to say Burns office. They have to do this. They have to do that. Burns willing to take a phone call from anywhere. Of course. But they want that phone call from that landline. Right. So ten years ago they built this system and now they don't know how to get out of it. And they're burning cash everywhere, and they need and to now go. Ironically, everything old is new again. You, you, you're almost has to be a little bit of a trust. Well, with the, with between, the, techno- be- the technologies we have, there's oh. no reason to be doing that. No none. reason at all. And, none, and none, I think none. the GPS stamp that's that's a great idea. Yeah, think yeah. About it. Literally, you get the site, click your button. I'm here. Click your button when you're done. Like that's it, right? I don't get it. <laughs> and Steve and I had this huge conversation because Steve said, "Listen, oh, Tim. At the man. end of the day, if Stadia didn't do something right, I'd just call you." Yeah. And I, we wouldn't argue about it. Right. You just go fix it. Why? Because we're friends. Cause you're fr- exactly. We've known each other for 30 years. Exactly. Relationship trumps all, man. Well, it, at the, it, it really does, right? It really the relationship is. trumps all. Yeah. 